Hi everyone, welcome back to Cricket Bat Info. I'm Mark and today what we're doing is we're going to be reviewing this CP laser here. Sent in by Simon from Puri. We've already done his Ross Taylor Gun and More Players Edition. We did a repair on that. If you want to go and have a look at that, the video is up in the corner there. You can click that link. I'll leave all this stuff in the description if you want to look at it after. The other thing is that if you want to have a look at the previous review I've done on a CP, a different laser, but uh, sent in by the manufacturer, I'll put the thing up there for, the, for you as well. So you can go and have a look at that. So, speeding right along, this has been sent in by Simon. He purchased it on a credit, so I don't know what he actually paid, but I do know that when CP was selling this, no longer on their website, they were £599. I think they did a discount on the one they sent over, uh, which eventually uh, moved along after a few months. Um, so this is the bag that it comes in. Yeah, full length bag. Uh, fairly good quality, doesn't have the stuff that's gonna put horrible marks on your cricket bat so that's a plus put that to the side i'll be showing you b-roll of the before and after because when it first came in obviously had this grip on it before i knocked it but we've actually changed it and i'll show you what's actually happened here uh, he wanted it a bit thicker so that's the normal well that's the thickness without that grip so it's a little bit narrower uh, this is a gm terrain grip these came out a few seasons ago I'm not sure if you can still get them and what I've actually done after it is I've put on some tennis racket overgrip. So this is a chamois um, overgrip. It actually just adheres to it through friction. A little bit of tape here, a little bit of tape down the bottom. And because it's got that natural stickiness you'll find on a tennis racket handle, it's actually holding the grip in place. So it's not gonna slide, but it also adds a little bit of thickness. And it only weighs, which is the best part, uh, 0.2 of an ounce. So, you know, a, a cricket bat grip is 1.6 ounces. So, you know, if you want to mess around with these, you can get some really good thickness in the handle uh, with not much weight. 10 magnificently straight grains running through it. I've done a shugu toe on it, uh, but you can see, just see how nice and straight those grains are running through there. Yeah, and that was one of the main reasons I, want, I was happy to show CP laser again, because it is actually a stunning piece of wood. Uh, once again with the CP laser, they've gone with the laser etching, front and back, little sticker here, and that's a burn-in down here that they do on all theirs. So they hand select their willow from what I understand, and they get them manufactured in Pakistan. Uh, at the moment, they're still just doing the epics in various grade ranges. So you can go over to their website, I'll put a link in the description, but they've got nothing to do with this video. Uh, generally what happens if this is the first time you're seeing it, these bats are sent in by the players themselves. So there's no money exchanging hands, I'm just doing this as a hobby. Um, so there's no point asking me in the comments price and help me buy it, because I'm not interested. I just want to show you bats and, and keep a catalog of, of what they are for, for uh, the future's sake. We've got some concaving up here in that area there. Uh, probably a millimeter, not really a lot. I'll put the gauge on it. Um, so the gauge, yeah, there you go. So you're not sacrificing a lot on width or a little bit on the edges. I'm going to push that up. Uh, so I think these are 38 mil edges and the spine came up to about 61. I'm actually going to push past showing you the measurements this, this round and leave a like if you think that's a better format. I, I've noticed a big drop off rate when I'm um, doing the measuring. So it looks like most of you don't really want to see that. Um, but comment if you if that actually is something that you're interested in. 16 mil up here, 32 there, really, really narrowed through here. So they're taking a lot of wood out through the splice. There's no uh, duck bill going on here. Uh, 21 centimeters down here and 21 in the center too. It's very straight uh, through that toe there and it's very squared off. And the edge size is 38 mil. So it's not a big bat as far as dimensions go, but it's a big bat as far as its weight goes. Uh, so this is actually 2.78 uh, naked and came in at 2.92 with the scuff, the stuff I did up here on the handle, um, polishing, edge tape, and the sugar. So that's added uh, probably an ounce a bit. As far as that shape goes, you can see, and this is a little bit for, for when you're looking at bats, even if they're not this bat, um, see how there's a massive drop off with the spine here and also 
uh, the edge. Generally, when you start to see that happen on a bat, the bat's not really going to perform there. It's generally, you'll get performance up until the peak of the spine, maybe an inch past it, and then it will die off. So with this particular bat here, you can tell that its hitting zone is going to be pretty much in this area to about here, and it's nothing's going to happen as we come up towards the top of the splice. Uh, one of the other things is, I'm not a huge fan and neither are bat makers of square toes. I know the players, uh, they're all the rage. But that square toe there, uh, ball hits right on that in a full flourish drive. Well, not only could that break, but it also sends a massive amount of twist and, and vibration up through the handle. And if the handle's got any twist in it, so this one's pretty... Uh, there's not really any twist in that. Uh, but if there's any sort of structural issue up here, it's just gonna break through the uh, top of the splice, maybe split up here and do all those sort of things. And, and you generally, if you play a lot of cricket, you see those types of things happen. Far more durability in the traditional round toe with a bit of camber, um, but it's all up to you, you know, what sort of shots you play. Um, if you're somebody who swings to the hills and closes your eyes and generally if you have a look at the face of your bat and you've got cherries here and cherries here, I would tell you to avoid getting a squared toe bat. No matter how much, how warm and tingly it makes you feel inside, then you know, like you feel that warmth when the thing breaks and you have to spend another six to eight hundred dollars to replace it, but it would just be a different sensation. As far as the handle goes, it's a semi-oval I wouldn't call that oval, it's more towards the semi-oval and slightly semi-oval for the top hand. Definitely allows you to play with your top hand commanding the bat, but uh, it's because it's not fully oval, you can still get your, your wrist involved down the bottom. Um, but yeah, I just I like the back of it and the front. It's just a stunning piece of willow. So a thousand bucks, that's a lot of money. And um, 2.9, but its original weight was 2.78. So when I pick this bat up, uh, because all that weight is down near the bottom, I'm finding uh, that it's picking up rather even and it feels to eight and a half. Probably that could be counterbalanced with maybe another grip or some stuff down the bottom here. Generally bats under 2.9, if you can add some uh, grip rings to the top here, just some weight to the very tip, it can make that bat uh, pick up a lot nicer. Um, as far as swing in the hands. We'll proceed to tap it up. So this is a Lignum Vitae mallet. Those who follow the channel would know uh, that I do a general tap up of this. Um, so starting at the toe. And you can see here in that mid-low position, it's starting to sound a little bit warmer and then right in that mid, just below mid really, it's really going. So you're gonna get a lot of action from here to there. And then as you get to where I said, it just dies. So there's nothing there in a, just sort of starts to die in that mid high position, but, but yeah, high, nothing. So definitely a bat for somebody who's going to be uh, on the front foot and really uh, bullying the, the bowlers trying to get to the pitch of the ball and dictate how their length is going to be. So yeah, it's it's a nice uh, profile. Um, you know, I have seen some bat makers put a lot more wood down here in the shoulders and, and maybe concave out or something like that. Um, they're all variations on the same basic theme that you see these days. So they want big edges, as full as possible, as much wood in the the playing area, um, keep that toe fairly thick, uh, but you're sacrificing this area here. So really nice bat, and um, it's a completely different bat to the bat Simon had before, which is that Ross Taylor, and if you want to go and have a look at that, as I said, I'll leave the, description, the uh, link in the description. I actually might put it in the thumbnails at the back of this video. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I uh, forgot to put all my lights on this time because I've actually filmed this bloody video six times and uh, I've had nothing but bad luck I've got to tell you this is the uh, amount of uh, weather and freezing cold or rain it's like of biblical proportions over uh, June July so I've just been sort of totally demotivated to come out and do this stuff 
Uh, but I finally had a break in the weather and I've got all the B-roll for this. So this is the review coming out this weekend and I'm filming on Friday and you're going to be seeing this on Sunday. But I do have a whole bunch of bats sitting behind me uh, that I'm going to start going through and uh, filming. Uh, and as we head into the new Australian season, you're going to start seeing some new models. But it's all viewer supported. If brands want to get behind the channel, you can always send bats in, but it's at your cost. So thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.